Just some reflections on the Forest game first of all. How did you uh, view it? A point gained or, or two points dropped in a way? Um, a bit of both, to be honest. Um, I think first half we struggled um, to get find our rhythm. I think we were quite sloppy. Um, fortunate to probably go in um, at the break nil-nil. Um, but on the flip side, when we get the goal, you're thinking, can we hang on here? Obviously, we don't. Um, so we definitely improved as the game went on and a point's probably a fair reflection of the game. Always tough though, isn't it, when you've come so close to getting a, a victory in that manner and then to, to concede at the end? Yeah, it is. Um, but that's you know the ups and downs of football. We uh, scored a last-minute winner at uh, home against Blackburn and we were on the end of you know a last-minute goal conceded this time. Um, I thought we done our best to try and defend and you know they had a lot of corners a lot of set pieces and the delivery was good all night and you could kind of see if they were going to get a goal it was going to probably be in that manner um, but no it's a, a good delivery a good header and you know just unfortunate we couldn't hold on another penalty save for yourself uh, a couple recently is it something that that you practice a lot in terms of penalties and how much kind of research do you do on the opposition going into a game from that perspective it's not really something you practice, to be honest. Um, the only time I've practiced penalties is probably if you're going into a shootout or something, and it's more for the outfield players than it is the goalies. Um, but there's a lot of work that goes into sort of the homework and researching with the analyst team and Juki, the goalie coach, and having a look at patterns if we can see, um, you know, if there's any sort of correlation between players and where they go or um, pressure penalties and whether they change side and it's just one of those things you, ha you have you know the data and you have a look at it um, but when it's out there it's up to you to make a decision and, and try and do your best to save it. Is it the equivalent of, of scoring a goal from, from kind of your perspective really is it the closest thing that it comes that way? Yeah I'd say so um, because you know you probably expected to score a penalty so um, I think you saw in the Blackburn game um, from the penalty I saved there, it gave everybody a lift, the crowd a lift, and you know, even in the Forest game, it gave everybody a lift, and I thought we improved after that. So that's probably the biggest thing from it. Obviously, from a personal point of view, it's great, um, but it gives the team a lift, um, it gives the crowd a lift, and you know, you could hear the noise around the stadium, and like I say, it just can maybe change the course of a game. I mean, you started the season as kind of second or, or third choice, really. You're now the number one with, with a good push with, with Adam Davis, of course. You know, how do you reflect on the season as a whole so far and, and how you've got to the point where you are? Just uh, hard work, to be honest. Uh, belief in your own ability. Um, you know, obviously, like you say, I started the season behind Rammers and then behind Mike, who's played ahead of me at um, West Brom. Um, but having that belief in your own ability, just doing the right things day in, day out in training, um, I was always confident that at some point I'd show what I can do. And when I did get a chance, I'd prove that I'm more than capable of performing at this level. Um, and I think my performances have shown that. How proud of the record are you this season with those those 12 clean sheets already? It's been some run. I appreciate before the last couple of games, but a very impressive run. Yeah, it's been great. Um, but the defence has been a massive part of that and there's quite a few games in there where I've not had many big saves to make um, obviously a lot of concentration that goes involved whether it's distribution or you know, crosses or whatever sweeping up at the back um, routine saves but there's also been games in there recently where I've had a big contribution which uh, obviously I'm proud about um, but it's a team effort you know sometimes the defenders dig you out and sometimes I dig them out so it's a collective effort and one which we're all proud of. Do you feel it's your shirt to lose now? Do you feel like you are the number one at, at Sheffield United? <laughs> I get that question all the time. I get it every time I come to do press day, I get that question. But I, I don't like that question, to be honest. Um, I feel it's a question for someone that's comfortable in their position. I don't think you can ever be comfortable. There's always someone that wants your shirt, always someone that's working hard. Um, for your job and I've been in that position myself um, trying to get a shirt off somebody else so no, I know obviously they've got the shirt at the moment the gaffer's you know, picking me every week so it's my job to make sure I perform well and, and stay there Overall 
the club compared to where it was a couple of months ago is in a great position right now, isn't it, with, with 12 games to go? Yeah, it is. Um, we had a difficult start to the season um, and had to play catch up. I think we've turned it around um, and done fantastically well to get into this position where we can obviously nick into the playoffs. Um, so yeah, we've just got to keep the momentum, keep the form going. Um, I think performances have been strong um, since the gaffers come in. So yeah, we're in a good place and, and hopefully we can keep it going. How much credit does, does Paul Hackingbottom need for kind of reigniting the, the season and getting you where you are? A lot of credit. Um, yeah, we were in a difficult position. The team looked low on confidence um, and it almost looked like the season was over before it began really. And he's come in and we've had a very, very strong um, run of games and he's changed the mentality in the group. Um, everyone's had to work a little bit harder and, and um, show a little bit more respect, I'd say, to your craft and make sure that you're um, at your best day in, day out. And when you're out there and you're giving the show, make sure you're giving 100% for this football club. And I think that's um, been reflected in performances and you know we've just, we've just been picking up wins and points. and. and that's a positive and like I say, hopefully we can keep that going. Do you feel like the back end to, to last season has given both Paul and, and the squad a kind of shared experience to, to drive on and, and use as motivation for this year? Yeah, it has. Um, you know, we came in last season as well and done a, and done a fantastic job. Uh, was in, again, in a difficult position. Um, but, you know, we know from that experience of working for him, with him, sorry, we know what he's about and he knows what we're about as well so coming in I think it was probably a bit easier for for us as a team and for the gaffer as well so no it's a good fit and like I say I think you can see that the performances have gone up a notch and form's picked up as well. Middlesbrough next up I think it's fair to say this is more than just the next game with the position in the league and with Chris Wilder returning how are you feeling about this one? Um, well, we know he'll be desperate for three points, and as are we. So, oh, it's not to sound cliche, but it's another game. It's another opportunity to get three points. Um, obviously, we know the manager well, but um, the focus is on the game itself and, and trying to get three points. I know you got kind of very limited opportunities under Chris, but are you still grateful that he brought you to the club and, and saw you as somebody that could help the club in the Premier League? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, I would have liked to have an opportunity. Um, it wasn't to be, but you know, he was always um, good with me. Um, so no complaints there. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my time working under him, and uh, he's been a top manager for this football club. Um, I think everyone would agree, and it's no surprise to see him doing well at Middlesbrough. Did you believe you, you should have had a chance last season at times, particularly when the, the results weren't going for the club? Listen, it was difficult. Um, I don't think you could blame Rammers for how we were playing I think the whole team was playing badly um, do I think there was a chance for me to go in maybe one or two opportunities um, at the start of the season obviously I was coming off a long layoff as well so I was a little bit off the pace but it proved to be the right decision to keep Rammers in there because he turned it around and his form was fantastic uh, towards the end of the season which ultimately saw him get in the England squad and a move to Arsenal so we couldn't have done that badly um, you know so no there's no complaints there at all just finally, a, a win tomorrow, I mean, that would be four points against two of your rivals over two games. Do you feel like it would put you in a decent spot for the running? Yeah, um, you know, obviously the three points are on our minds. Um, we know it's when you play a rival or someone around you in the table, um, a win over them gives you a huge advantage. So, you know, we make no mistake about it. We're going to try and get the three points. It's not a game um, you want to lose, but if you can get that advantage, um, they might not go for it.